Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for our team fight tactics. It is the start of set 11. This is footage taken from the very first day of set 11, Inkborn Fables. So as we typically do at the start of each set, I'm going to record this video as an introduction to the set and, and an introduction to team fight tactics more broadly. The assumption watching this video is you have no knowledge of team fight tactics. You've never played this game before. And I want to provide an overview of what the gameplay looks like for people who might be new to the game and might be interested in getting into the game since we have a new set. Well, here at the beginning of each game, here in set 11, we always have a portal. We're going to get one of three choices. Everybody gets a vote. People stand on different locations. Uh, I was hoping that we would get the one I had picked, which was Amble Buffet, but instead we get the one called Crab Rave because six of the eight players went over there to stand there, so the odds were pretty good, 75% that that's what was going to be chosen. So you're always going to start out with a portal. The one that we have, Crab Rave, is it transforms all the neutral monsters into dancing crabs, and they drop a lot more loot than normal. Uh, but then at the end of the game, you fight like a super-powered crab, so people like it because it just gives out tremendous amount of loot. I don't really like this one because I think it kind of distorts the gameplay, but anyway, your mileage may vary. All right, so team fight tactics. As I said, this is a PvP game, so you are playing against other players, and the idea is that you will build a team composition using the various League of Legends characters, so all the, you know, individuals that you might know from standard League of Legends. We've got Ari on the board, Yasuo's on the board. These are some of the more popular champs, so they seem to find their way into every single set of Teamfight Tactics. And the whole goal is you build a team using these characters. All the different units have individual traits of some kind. You put them on your board, and then you pit them against the teams of the other players and you battle it out to see who is going to be the strongest, essentially, until there's only one person left. Uh, there's actually, um, this is actually the two-player mode, so I'm actually playing here together with a partner, JDPL Grillo. There are some differences in the two-player mode, but by and large, the gameplay is relatively similar. I'll talk about some of the differences in the two-player mode as we go on. First things first, so you build your team based on getting units in the shop. You can see down at the bottom of the screen, there's a shop and you can have the chance to purchase units there using gold. I have Darius, Kha'Zix, Caitlyn, although I'm about to get a new shop after this. Uh, we'll come back to the shop in a minute. We also have three different augments that take place over the course of the game. One of them is at the beginning of stage two. So we get our choice of a couple different bonuses that are going to last for this particular game. And I opt to take the uh, Reaper emblem. This is going to allow me to turn a unit into a Reaper who is not normally a Reaper. And this is one of the uh, things that you can get from the augments is you can basically get the option to give traits to units that don't already normally have those traits. All right, so as I said, each unit that you see down in the shop will have uh, different traits attached to them. So if we're looking at the shop right now, as I stop fiddling with my board, we have a Jax, Ink Shadow Warden, uh, Kabuko, Fortune Bruiser, Darius, Umbral Duelist. These are the traits that these units have. And when you put them on the board, they put those traits into play. So currently I have four traits in play. I have Faded, Bruiser, Dryad, and Reaper trait. Part of playing the game is learning what all of these different traits do. So for example, I have the Faded trait in play. This gives me a benefit for, well, I have to have three Faded units in play. I can form a pair between two of them, a little bond. Right now, Kindred and Yasuo have that. And they will give each other different stat bonuses. As you get more ranks in the Faded trait, you can give your whole team the stat bonuses instead of just two units. But for right now, it's just the two units. And uh, by the way, this is a great shop here. I hit two-star Kindred and two-star Ari right away. I'll talk more about what that means in a minute. So I have these different traits in play. Faded gives a bonus to these two units, Kindred and Yasuo. Bruiser gives my team more health. Bruisers are frontline tank units. There's a bunch of different tank traits in this game. Bruiser is one of them. Dryad is probably the most interesting for this game. Again, in different games, you're going to be playing different things. My past self is highlighting this. But Dryad units gain ability power, which means that their abilities do more damage. And they also get additional health. This is a stacking trait. The longer the game goes on, the more health the Dryad units will gain from the trait. Every time they kill a unit, the Dryad, unit t the, uh, Dryad units permanently gain health. I believe that in this current patch, they get four health per enemy unit killed at Dryad 2, and that goes up at higher tiers. So the longer the game goes on, the more units, my, uh, more units I'm going to kill with my uh, Dryad units, and the more health they're going to get. So as I said, this is a trait that benefits you from putting it in early. 
And then I also have Reaper trait, which gives the ability for uh, units who are Reapers have the ability to critically strike on their abilities. And then the Reaper 4 also gives a true damage bleed effect, but that's a little bit more complicated. I'm trying to stick to some of the basics right now. Before we get back to the basics, though, uh, this is our unique uh, thing for set 11 is we get these encounters. That is, we will various at uh, different points in time throughout the game. Different League of Legends characters will show up and they just basically do something random. Like they literally will do something completely random. This one was Shen offers you a choice of starter packs concerning champions and one component. I chose the Reaper option and it gave me a two star Kha'Zix and it gave me a Yone. So that actually has given me more Reaper units. And I'm going to try to play up to Reaper 4, which is the as high as the trait goes. Uh, normally, I would not be able to play Reaper 4 until I get further in the game. But um, because I have this Reaper emblem, I was able to turn Yasuo into a Reaper, who is not normally a Reaper. I'm going to be able to dive deeper into this trait than I normally would at an early point in time. So far, the encounters, like I said, just periodically throughout the game, basically something completely random will happen. I am not a big fan of this. I do not think it's a particularly good set mechanic, largely because there's really no way to plan for the encounters that just like wacky stuff happens periodically throughout the match and you just have to adapt as you know as you see fit i mean i guess there's some skill in that to like seeing what's coming and being able to adapt and adjust but i uh, i don't know i'm not a huge fan of that overall i think it's not the best set mechanic just wacky random stuff happening throughout the course of these matches all right, so uh, you might have noticed we had uh, as far as the way that this is organized we had a couple of minion rounds first when we just fight minions and then um, have a chance to build our team. Then after that, we have three PvP rounds. Uh, you can see this is actually tracked at the top of the screen. There's a little indicator. It's where it says 2-4, and then there's like little icons at the top of the screen. So you'll always have a couple minion rounds to start the game. Then you'll hit three player versus player rounds. Then there's going to be a carousel where you get to take an item off a carousel. And then after that, there'll be two more PvP rounds, two more rounds against players, and then you'll have another minion round, and then the pattern just repeats over and over and over again. And that's the general setup for playing uh, this, for playing the game is minion rounds, and then a round against another team, and then more minion rounds again. I went ahead and took a Kindred off that carousel. Uh, I mostly wanted the sword because it allowed me to make an item Spear of Shojin that's going to allow Kindred to cast their ability more often. But I also did get another Kindred as well. And so I now actually have five Kindreds overall. This is important because I'm trying to star this unit up to a three star level. So just a word about star levels. Uh, when you initially buy a champion, they come as a one star unit. So if you just buy a unit in the shop, they are a one star unit. And then if you get multiple copies of those units, they can star up and become more powerful over time. The normal way to do this is you get three copies of a unit and they become a two star version of the unit. Two stars are better in each respect. They have higher base stats. They have they do more damage with their abilities. They have more health, etc. So you want a two star as many of your units as possible. However, it is possible to get a three star version of a unit, which is quite rare and hard to do. Uh, by the way, here we have another encounter. Kha'Zix is going to cost experience to cost three gold instead of four gold. This is actually kind of annoying because I just dumped some gold into experience over the last, in the previous round, so the timing is a little bit awkward, but uh, whatever. Just another example of one of these very random encounters. And anyway, as I was saying, three copies of a unit makes them a two-star unit. I've had reasonably good luck at two-starring my board. I have quite a few two-stars already. But if you get three two-star copies of a unit, so that's three, three, and three, or nine total copies, then you have a three-star version of the unit, which is rare and powerful and difficult to do because, of course, you need nine copies of the unit, and there's only so many copies of the unit to go around. I am hoping to make a three-star version of Kindred in this game because they are my main carry. Uh, they're the one who's kind of doing the main damage load for my team. And I already have five Kindreds, so I have pretty good odds to be able to hit that. This is also the two-player mode. And I can work together with my partner, JDPL Grillo, to try to make a three-star version of Kindred. So Grillo will also be looking out for additional copies of Kindred to send over to me. And you can see my team is just crushing everybody right now. My team is extremely strong for this point in time in the game. That's good because as we kill more units, that means we get more stacks for the Dryad trait. We have killed 22 units, and we're getting 216 health from that so far. So that's pretty good. All right, now it's time for another minion round. As I said, we had the three player versus player rounds, then a, an item carousel, then two more player versus player rounds, and then we're back to a minion round again. 
while we have a chance here, let me talk a little bit more about the shop. So as I said, you buy the units in the shop. It's the main way you get units. You can also get them sometimes in drops from the minions. You can also take them off the carousel, but mostly you buy them in the stores. That's the main thing. Now they do come at different cost tiers. So if you look at my shop right now, Malphite, one cost, Tristana, three cost. Aatrox 2 cost. So we have a couple of different cost tiers here in the shop. The more expensive units, as you'd expect, are the more powerful units. And you generally want to build your team around getting more of the powerful late game units because they're just kind of better units in every respect. Now, again, we, we, we've got a shop refresh because it's a fresh round. And now we have Alawi 3 cost, Thresh 3 cost, we have Janna 2 cost, Amumu 3 cost, and Kogma 1 cost. So again, that is the cost to buy these units in the store. But the more expensive units are also the stronger units, and you want to be playing more of them as the game goes on. You want to just be understandably playing more 4 and 5 cost units towards the end of the game as opposed to 1 and 2 cost units. Now, the odds as far as what we're going to see in the shop, by the way, I get to pull another item here. I'm going to go ahead and get a frontline tank item because I currently have no tank items. Uh, the odds of what you are going to see in the shop are listed right above the interface. Unfortunately, my pass off is looking at other boards right now. But uh, if you look right above the Alawi portrait, you'll see little percentage odds. Or again, you will when I'm back on my actual store. Uh, I'm going over to reinforce Grillo's board. This is something that can happen in the two-player mode. If you win quickly, you can come over to help your partner and vice versa. But of course, the other teams can do the same thing as well. Anyways, I was saying on the interface right above where it was Alawi's portrait, but we actually are going to have our <coughs> our next augment here, unfortunately. Uh, bad timing for this. I'm trying to make a different point here. But we get our choice of some more different options, which one of these things we want to have. So uh, I, I end up taking the static shift here. I don't know if that was a, the best choice. I don't think it was bad. <coughs> I think Martyr also would have been a good choice here as well. And by the way, I'm going to make a two-star Janna which is not a unit I want to play, but uh, I can then send over to Grillo and will be a good unit for his particular board. So I'm going to look to make a couple more items here. I'm going to put the Static Shiv on Kindred, which is a decent item on Kindred. Probably not their best in slot item, but not a bad one. And then I'm going to be making items for a future unit, Kane, who has the four cost Reaper. I'm going to put them on Yasuo for right now because Yasuo is going to get sold later on. So he can hold items for a future Kane right now. Anyway, back to the point I was trying to make. So again, the percentage-based odds down there at the bottom of the screen, you can see 30%, 40%, 25%, 5%, 0%. Those are the odds for each unit at each cost tier to show up in my shop. So you're going to see five champions every time the shop gets refreshed. And the odds are 30%. It's going to be a one-cost unit. 40% it's going to be a two-cost unit, and so on and so forth. So um, I can't even see the five-cost units yet because I have 0% odds to get them. And this is dictated by what level you are. I am currently level six, so I am mostly seeing two-cost units and then also some one-cost and three-cost. But I'm not really seeing four- and five-cost units because my level is too low. So as my level gets higher... I will have better odds of seeing the more expensive units, and that's a good thing because I want to play more of the expensive units. So as you increase your level over the course of the game, you'll see the more expensive units. There are, now, there are some times where you deliberately want to stay at a lower level because you have um, better odds to see the less expensive units. And this game actually is a case of that because I want to find more kindreds. So there actually is a, a case to stay here at level 6. Try to find more kindreds here at level 6 because I have the best odds to find two cost units at level 6. And that's what Kindred is. Kindred is a two-cost unit. So how do you change your level? How does your level go up? Well, as you might imagine, your level does go up over time, over the course of this game. You always get two experience at the start of every round. So it naturally goes up over time, no matter what. Uh, you can see where it says level 6, 14 out of 36. So next round, I'll be at 16 out of 36, no matter what. You can also spend four gold to buy four XP. So you can translate your gold into experience. This is the main way to get experience throughout the game is you will spend gold to increase your level. Uh, if I were not going to try to get Kindred 3-star, then I would definitely be looking to dump my gold into experience and to try to get to a higher level as soon as possible. Generally speaking, it's better to level up quickly, but uh, there are cases where exceptions, and this game actually is one because I want to try to get Kindred 3-star. I have five Kindreds. I need to find four more. That will get me to Kindred 3-star, which is going to be a very powerful unit, especially because I have all of Kindred's traits in play. Kindred is Reaper plus Dryad, uh, and also Faded traits. So I'm trying to get all of uh, Kindred's traits in play, if possible. 
All right. So um, we have another item carousel, and you might notice that uh, we pick in stages. First two people go, then two people go, then two people go. And the order is the teams that has the most health picks last is the way it goes. We have the most health. We've been win streaking throughout this game. So that's why we're the last ones to pick here. I also have the champion send back again. Uh, when you use it, it goes on cooldown, and then it comes back again in about five rounds or so. So I am going to... Um, Go ahead and send that Janna over to Grillo, which is going to be a useful unit for him. And then I have a chance to pick up another item here. In uh, the double up round, you get a chance to gift your partner items. And uh, I'm going to take a cloak, which will be useful for me. Okay. So in addition to this, now you might have noticed I am getting shop refreshes. What's going on here? Well, I am spending two gold to refresh my shop. You always have an option to do this. You can spend two gold in exchange for a fresh shop. And this is another one of the mechanics in the game of how you can spend gold. Obviously, you spend gold to purchase champions. This is another way to spend gold. You can also use it to, as I said, um, you can use it to buy champions, uh, get additional experience to get to a higher level, or to refresh the shop. So if you are looking for a particular unit, like I was trying to find Kindred here. Uh, I was trying to find additional copies of Kindred. I actually had kind of bad luck. I rolled about 20 gold. And I did not find any kindreds, but I did find some other good things. I found a two-star Nar, and then I also was able to find an early Orn. Orn is a, a four-cost unit, and I was able to find the Orn. By the way, I finally lost a round. I had not lost a round the entire game thus far, but I did finally lose that one. It was pretty close, but uh, didn't end up losing that one. So now I would actually like to play these two units. I would very much like to play the... Um, the the Nar that I have, because I actually two-starred the Nar. I found three Nars, and I'd also like to play this Orn as well. You might notice that all these units are color-coordinated. Uh, they're all kind of like a bluish-purple color. Uh, they are all Dryad units, and I would like to get four Dryad in play. So uh, I was going to stay here at this level and re-roll for Kindred, but uh, instead, because I was able to find these units, I now decided, okay, I'm going to go to level 7, and then I'll roll for Kindred on level 7 and stay on level 7 and look to find more Kindreds there. The odds are going to be a little bit worse to find Kindred on level 7. Uh, it's currently 40% odds for two-cost units, which is what Kindred is. That's going to go down to 35% odds. So it is lower, but it's not enormously lower. So I still have reasonably good odds to find the Kindred on level 7. But uh, at level 7, I can put these units in play, and that will get me up to 4 um, Dryad. And that's going to increase the health stacking. Instead of 3 health per enemy killed, it's going to be 7 health per enemy killed for my Dryad units. And Orn is also going to be a better tank unit than anything I have in here right now. So definitely need to improve my frontline. Line, um, the units that stand up there and tank damage because some of the units I have in there are starting to fall off a little bit. I have a Galio in there, but Galio doesn't really fit my board. Galio is just kind of a unit that I randomly found over the course of this. All right, I was definitely going to lose this round, but then Grillo is able to come over and reinforce me. And so we will happily take this round. And uh, Grillo is still on a big win streak, but I did lose mine. I lost that one round, which is a little bit annoying because uh, it actually does affect my economy, which I'll, again, talk more about in a minute. So it's the end of stage three, time for another crab round here. And I am just waiting for the beginning of stage four here where Grillo will be able to send me the cane he's found. He's turned up a cane in his store. He has not been able to send the cane to me thus far because you can only send two, one, two, and three cost units to your partner in stage two and stage three. And then in stage four, you can send anything to your partner. So uh, he's going to make that change. We're also gonna get a tremendous amount of loot once again. This is normal for uh, the, when you're playing Crab Rave, you get a tremendous amount of loot. So we're going to get all kinds of stuff here. And then I'm going to go ahead and level to level 7. Again, I'm spending 4 gold for 4 experience so I can get to level 7. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to do my transition here. I'm going to put in the Nar. I'm going to put in the Orn. So I need to get the Galio off the board. I'm also going to get the Cane. So now I'm dumping the Yasuo. Yasuo is good for the early game, but uh, no longer really needed now. So I need to now replace the Galio with the Orn. Come on, past self. You know you need to do this. There we go. Orn's going to hold my tank items. Orn's a good tank. We're going to put the Reaper Emblem on Nar. Because uh, I need someone to hold the Reaper Emblem to get up to four Reapers. And Nar is going to be a reasonably good holder of that. Nar is uh, kind of does attack damage, physical damage. So we'll be a reasonably good user of that item. And then now I'm going to look to put items on Kane here as well. And uh, now I'm just going to try to roll and try to find more Kindreds here. 
is the goal. So uh, now I actually have five Reapers in, which is too many Reapers. I can drop a unit, and the unit that I can drop is um, the Kha'Zix. I do not need Kha'Zix on my board. Uh, five Reaper is excessive. It's not doing anything. So that's going to allow me to put in another unit, and I really want another frontline unit because I'm a little lacking in tankiness right now. Uh, all right, we get our last Augment as well, and it turns out to be Prismatic. That is the strongest tier of Augment. I actually would really like the Freaky Friday, which would give me two... Uh, it would give me two... In uh, two Trinity Forces, which is a very nice uh, item to have. But uh, I already have Kindred fully itemized, so I can't put that on Kindred, unfortunately. And I still need to get the Kha'Zix off my board. Kha'Zix is not really doing anything. But I'll go ahead and do this. This is going to put Behemoth trait in play. That's another frontline tank trait. And uh, now I'm refreshing my shop. I'm rerolling my shop, trying to find more of these units. I'm going to find the Yone 2-star. That's pretty good. And uh, I'm rolling more gold here because I want to find one more Kindred. Now, I got a Champion Duplicator from that Augment. If I can find one more Kindred, I can use the Champion Duplicator, and then that'll give me Kindred 3-star, which is going to be very powerful. So I rolled and rolled and rolled here. I was trying to find just that one more Kindred, but I don't find it, unfortunately. And that was a little bit unlucky. I've actually rolled quite a bit of gold not to find more Kindreds here. Uh, if I had been able to find one more Kindred, I could have used that Duplicator and I would be in much better shape, but uh, unfortunately I didn't find it, so I'm still stuck on Kindred 2-star instead of Kindred 3-star, and that's a bit of a downer uh, because I actually spent quite a bit of gold and did not hit. Now, my board definitely spiked in power there. I was able to get 4 Reaper plus 4 Dryad in, and uh, I actually have pretty good items for my setup here. Oh, by the way, one other nice thing about Double Up is I can go to Grillo's board if I reinforce him, and then I can kill more units on his board. I've currently killed 63 enemies for 591 uh, bonus health on my Dryad units. So the fact that I can kill uh, units on his board actually is nice for Dryad trait as well. That's unique to the two-player mode. You obviously wouldn't get that in the single-player mode. Alrighty. So uh, let me talk a little bit more about the in-game economy. Uh, I did find a Lilia there that I was able to send over to Grillo. And by the way, I'm still rolling here. I'm still trying to find this last Kindred. If I can find one more Kindred, my board's going to spike really, really hard because I can use that duplicator to get three-star Kindred. I'm stuck on seven Kindreds, which is really annoying. And I also have all these other pairs as well. By the way, now I'm up to six Nars, so I'm actually not that far off Nar three-star. But uh, I want to stop here. I don't want to roll too much more gold. So unfortunately, I just have not hit. And uh, that's going to hold my hold back my team a fair bit. I'm actually really close in terms of pairs, which is not what you want. I was also rolling because I had all these pairs here, right? I have a, I have, I have seven out of nine Kindreds. If I find one more, I can use the Duplicator for Kindred 3-star. I have two out of three Orns. I have two out of three Canes. I have two out of three Yones, and I have two out of three um, uh, uh, Threshes. So I'm so close to hitting two-star versions of all these units, and a three-star version of Kindred but I'm like one off on all of these. So it made sense to roll gold there, but unfortunately I whiffed, didn't hit, and now Grillo is holding one more Kindred. So we're gonna wait until Grillo can send me that Kindred, uh, which will be at the beginning of stage five, and then I'll just um, use the duplicator if I can't find Kindred there. All right, so it's time for another carousel. This one is, uh, our encounter is we get a full item added to the component. Normally you just get a component, but now we get a full item as well. So I was like, okay, I'm still mostly looking for tank stuff here. If I can find something to make a tank item, that would be pretty nice. I also can take the could take the the um, Thresh for uh, Thresh 2-star. I maybe would have done that, but that gets taken. So I was like, okay, well, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, take the Cloak. I can put the Cloak uh, with the Cloak on my bench and make a frontline tank item called Dragon's Claw. That's going to make the Orn tankier. And then I have this Infinity Edge, so I'll just put that on uh, Yone, who does deal physical damage. So we'll go ahead and do that, and I can sell this Annie that the champion came on. So let's go ahead... Put this on Orn. Orn is holding our tank items. Unfortunately, Orn's still only a one-star unit, but uh, I should be able to find another one sooner or later. And then we'll put this Infinity Edge on Yone. It, it, it's a decent item on Yone. He does physical damage like Kane, so it's not going to be too bad. Oh, and I guess I already—I guess I did hit two-star um, Yone. I could try to go for Yone three-star, but I don't think that's going to happen, and I kind of need to save money. So let's cover the economic side of the game. I haven't really had a chance to do this yet, but um, I want to talk about gold. Uh, where gold comes from and what it means in terms of building your economy. By the way, I'm actually going to reforge this and I get another belt, which is nice. So I can go ahead and make a, a war logs for Orn. It's going to make Orn super tanky. He's has like an incredible amount of health between the war logs and the dryad trait, but uh, he will eventually still die in these fights, but he's going to last for a very, very long time, which is going to be great because it's going to allow Kindred to kill and Kane to kill more stuff. Okay. So you will note on the interface right above Annie's portrait, it tells me how much gold I have. I currently have 33 gold. So where does gold come from in Teamfight Tactics? 
So it comes from a couple different sources. Obviously, you can get it from the minion rounds, but the main way you get it is you get a certain amount of gold at the beginning of each round. Uh, first of all, you always get five gold at the start of each round. That will never change. You always get five gold no matter what. In addition to that, you can get gold based on whether you are on a win streak or a loss streak. So the, if you're on a long win streak or a long loss streak, you get additional gold. It starts out at one additional gold per round. I believe if you're on a two-match win streak or a two-match loss streak, you get the plus one gold. And then uh, that extends up to if you're on a six-match win streak or a six-match loss streak, you get three additional gold. So that actually is pretty significant in terms of how much money you get. You can imagine if someone's not on any kind of a win streak or loss streak and they're getting five gold. And meanwhile, you are on full win streak and you're getting uh, three additional gold. That's eight gold per round. You know, eight as opposed to five. That's pretty significant increase in terms of how much money you're making. So uh, it really does add up over time. And it's beneficial to be on a win streak or a loss streak. Now, obviously, it's better to be on a win streak. But even if you are on a long, long, long loss streak, you are getting additional income from that. So that's one of the game's catch-up mechanics is if you're on a big, big loss streak, you do get additional econ from it. Uh, the other big catch-up mechanic is you get to pick first on the carousel. So that's kind of the other thing is you get to pick off the uh, carousels first. All right, so that's the, the, uh, the second way you can get gold. First, you always get five gold, and then you can get an additional three gold if you're on a big win streak or loss streak. The other way that you get gold is you get interest based on how much money is in your bank. For every 10 gold in the bank, you get an additional gold at the start of the next round. So right now I have 50 gold in the bank. I can get up to five additional gold at the start of each round. So instead of getting five gold, I could get 10 gold, uh, which is double the amount. So it actually benefits you a lot to have money sitting in your bank. Uh, actually makes a big difference. You might have noticed that typically I try to stay over 50 gold if possible. Uh, it's often a good way to do that. By the way, I'm going to level here and play Cinder because she actually puts Faded Trait back in play and puts Arcanist Trait in play, which is a Spellcaster Trait here. So uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, and I actually like the way my uh, synergies have come together in this game. Now I'm trying to do the faded pair bond between uh, Thresh and Kindred, so I'll put that in play. So anyway, you can you, it makes sense, right? Uh, if by holding money in your bank, you are able to get additional income. But you might have noticed I dropped under 50 gold there. I went down to 30 gold. And you might be like, well, why would you do that? You just cost yourself money. It's true. I did cost myself money. But by leveling to level 8, I was able to put Sindred in play and make my board stronger. And so this is always one of the big tensions in the gameplay in Team Fight Tactics is, um, you know, you can hold that money in your bank. Uh, and you'll get additional income each round, but if it's sitting in your bank, it's not doing anything to make your team stronger. You're not spending it on champions. You're not spending it on experience to get to higher levels. You're not spending it on shop refreshes to get more chances to buy more units. So while that gold is sitting in your bank, it does make more money for you, but it's not doing anything to help your team get stronger. So you always have to be thinking about when playing this game. It's like, is my board strong enough? Do I need to uh, do I need to roll to get stronger? Do I need to try to uh, spend for more experience to get to a higher level? And that's where a lot of the tension in the gameplay comes from. By the way, this is another gift round in terms of double up. You would not get this in the single player mode. Uh, I end up getting an additional item from Grolo. And then he also sends me the Kindred that he's been sitting on. He finally had the champion uh, send come off cooldown. So now I'm on eight Kindreds. And uh, I'm one also. I can duplicate the Kindred, but I want to roll here first. I want to see if I can hit the Kindred naturally or not. So I'm looking here, looking here. I'm refreshing the shop. I'm not seeing anything I want. Come on. It's like, come on, game. Can I finally hit something useful here? And then, oh, the God Tier shop. I hit Kane 2 star. I hit Kindred 3 star. So then I'm going to use my duplicator on Orn instead. So my board has just spiked enormously over the course of that round. And, and now it's a good example of converting economy into board strength. So again, I just sacrificed some economy, right? I went all the Way down to 20 gold so my my income is definitely going to be lower here but i converted that into board strength which is the whole point of the game the point of the game is not to have the most money in your bank possible it's to have a strong board and uh, i just was able to do that there so i upgraded orn to orn two star i upgraded kane to kane two star and i upgraded kindred to kindred three star so whereas i had been losing the last couple combat rounds now my board is really really strong kane did 10,000 damage kindred did 9,000 damage orn was an absolute brick wall right there so um that was definitely the right play and i'm happy with how that worked out and uh, i think that that was like i said a good example of the trade-offs in the gameplay between economy and um make, building a strong team is those two things are intention throughout the game and that was a good example now that i've done that i'm going to try to econ back up to 50 gold again and then once i get up to 50 gold i can decide do i want to try to push to level nine which would be the next level 
or do I want to try to roll further to try to hit some units? So for example, I could try to roll and hit NAR 3-star. I am on 7 NARs. The problem is the odds to hit the 2-cost units are relatively low now. Uh, now that I'm level 8, the odds to hit the 2-cost units are only 25%, so I don't have great odds to hit the 2-cost units. So NAR 3-star, it's not far off. I only need 2 more NARs, and that would be helpful. But uh, it's probably more likely that I would look to go to level 9 if I could. As you can see there where it says level 8, it says level 8, 6 out of 72. I would need whatever 72 minus 6 is experience to get to level 9. I guess that's 66 gold. Uh, I would have to spend 66 gold to get there. So I want to get back up to 50 gold where I'm getting the max income benefit once again. And then I can decide from there, like I said, if I want to go to level 9 or if I need to um, roll further to try to hit some other units. But I think my board is, is pretty solid here. Four Reaper, four Dryad, a Faded. I have Faded in play, although just at Faded 3. Arcanist, Behemoth, Ghostly, Warden. Uh, Behemoth is another tank trait. Warden is another tank trait. So I actually have uh, most of the tank traits in. I dropped Bruiser trait, but I have most of the tank traits in here. Uh, anyway, we have time for another carousel, and I really was not sure what to get here. I wanted another item for Kane, but none of these are good items for Kane. Most of these are spellcasting items, and Kane deals physical damage. So I wasn't quite sure what to pick up here. Uh, so I believe that I end up taking the... What did I get here? I think I got the Ionic Spark off this carousel, because Ionic Spark is a tank item that debuffs enemy magic resistance. And I think I just end up putting this on the Thresh. Uh, but then after that, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should just put an item on Syndra. Syndra would have made good use of, like, that death cap, but uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not really... Uh, Syndra's not really doing anything other than being a trait bot right now, so uh, she's just con con contributing her traits, which are Faded and Arcanist. So I'm not sure that playing through the Syndra was necessarily that great. All right, now I do want to talk about something else, and that's player health. I haven't really talked about that too much because Grillo and I have not really lost that much health. But as you might imagine, when you win rounds, you don't lose health. When you lose rounds, you do lose health. And if it's a close loss, you don't lose much health. But if it's a big loss, you actually lose a lot of health. Uh, towards the end of the game, you also lose more health. So like in stage two, when the game begins, you don't lose much health if you lose. But by the time we get to stage five... You're losing a lot of health, even if it's a close loss. And that's, you know, just to make it so you're getting closer to the end of the game. Everybody's had a chance to build their teams at this point. It's kind of like, yeah, we want the game to be over with. So there are actually two teams on one health, and we're actually going to knock one of them out here. And then I'm going to go over and reinforce Grillo's board. And together, we're going to hit another team that's on one HP. And then we're going to try to see if we can knock this team out as well. They actually, by the way, they came over and reinforced their partner, but does not look like this was enough. By the way, Kindred getting a chance to kill more units for more Dryad stacks. So we actually knock out two teams that round, uh, and actually two of the more dangerous teams. The team that's on eight health we actually thought was weaker than the teams that are on one HP. But uh, those teams weren't able to make their boards until they were almost dead, and so... Uh, yeah, that's the thing. You got to watch your health. Uh, you know, if your health is, you can have the best board in the game, but if you're on one HP and your partner loses, that's that for double up. Uh, you, you do have a shared life bar. One thing that's unique to double up mode is you do get a chance to, um, you do get like one extra life is you can't die as a team unless you're on one HP. So even if you're on like two HP and you take a crushing loss, you will go down to one hit point. You will not die if you are not on one HP. So uh, we're hoping that we can win this round and knock this team down to one HP um, because then they'll have a chance to get knocked out if they lose another round. But you do always get that one last chance when you are uh, playing double up mode. By the way, that does not apply to the one player mode. In the one player mode, if you hit zero health, you're just dead. Uh, there is no last, last additional life or anything like that. All right, this person is playing a porcelain board. They managed to make a three-star Amumu who is extremely tanky, but looks like I have just barely enough to kill their board. And uh, we're gonna take them down to one HP. There we go. So I won my round and then Grillo won his round and we get them down to one HP. All right, now it's time for the minion round, but ah, there's something unique about this minion round. Remember, our portal at the beginning of the game was Crab Rave, and uh, Crab Rave drops a tremendous amount of loot, like way more items, way more gold than you would get in a normal game. But, but, at the end of stage five, you have to face the Super Crab. And unlike most minion rounds, which are usually a time where you can just kind of sit back and relax, they're not really that dangerous, uh, the Super Crab here at the end of Stage 5 is extremely dangerous. It is actually very hard to kill this unit, um, and there's a very high chance that it can wipe out your team. You have to have a very, very strong board in order to beat the Crab. It's actually quite normal to lose against the Crab, but uh, I'm hoping that I have just enough. Unfortunately, Kindred died there. Most of my team is dead. It looks like it's going to be down to just the Orn. Can Orn do this? Orn has a Sunfire Cape that's burning away. 
And Orin just barely manages to kill the crab. But uh, guess what? The other team, not as lucky. One of them loses to the crab. And uh, since they're on one HP, that's it. GG, game over, crab OP. So uh, we actually win by having the crab knock out one of the other teams, which is pretty hilarious. Um, I think we would have beaten them anyway because they were on one HP and we had like 50 HP left or something. By the way, apparently that person doesn't like their partner. It's a little bit mean. It's difficult to beat the crab. We have to have a very strong board to beat the crab. But anyway, um, I was able to beat the crab, so that's that. And uh, we were able to wrap that one up. It was a relatively straightforward game. As you'd expect, this is the beginning of the set. We are at uh, we are not at the top of the double up ladder. And apparently, by the way, I'm going to have to adjust the recording software because this loading screen is... Uh, a little bit buggy here. Uh, apparently the um, PBE client, which is what I had it set to, is a little bit different in terms of how it sizes the windows. But whatever, I can fix that. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to mention again, I hope that people enjoyed this video. Uh, this looks like it'll be a fun set. If you enjoy the set, you're welcome to come join us. We do games on Friday mornings and then also in the evening. So until then, hope everybody's having a great week. Take care, folks. Hope to see you around and see you soon.